Greetings of the day to all. Once again, I welcome you. Today, the purpose of our virtual meeting or gathering is we will be discussing about some of the important concepts or terms related to uh, your module, managing and leading digital education. Just for your information, this session would be recorded and you will get the PPT as well as video on your learning management portal. Uh, for this purpose, I'm going to use PowerPoint presentation. Uh, you just confirm me that is it visible to you? The slides are visible. Just give me a thumb. Okay, Kit. Yeah, I can see now. I can okay, see. Th thank you so much. Thank you. So let's get started because uh, this is your taught module, managing and leading digital education. So we have discussed about the assignment requirements and assignment questions a uh, few days before. So today I'll be discussing about some of the important terms related to this module. First of all, uh, let's talk about number of ECTS credit, that's 10. I think that's already clear to you. And if I talk about module description, uh, that is important to know that before going into the discussions of this module, what basic concept or things it's included. So this module basically provide a comprehensive coverage of both the hard and software requirements to bring about changes and adoption of a range of educational technology. So if you can have a look over it, it's basically concerned with soft, soft and hardware requirements because now we are in an era where we are focusing on digital education or the e-learning. So this module will help you to know about the different types of hardware and software requirements, how you can manage it, how you can you know, provide to your students as well as into your classrooms. Also, it will also focus on adoption of a range of educational technologies. So in a present scenario, we have different kind of educational technology. There is no that. Planity of and the 100 of technologies are available online, which we can use individually as well as collaboratively. And these are available for use in today's classroom. And the many ways teacher can use them effectively enhance teaching and learning. So first of all, uh, it, it need to understand that when, if I talk about digital education, uh, because in this century, the classrooms are versatile, they are, they are flexible. So we cannot rely only on physical setup or a face-to-face -face, you know, setup. Sometime we need to shift to online classes also. Uh, in the school situation, most of the cases, the classes are face-to-face, -face, but in the higher education, you can see that many classes are in the uh, digital mode or uh, online mode. So this module will help you to know about the different, you know, the ways you can integrate the technology into your classroom so that you can make your teaching learning process more effective. And if I talk about learning outcomes, so it, it's important that uh, what type of learning outcomes you will get after the learning of this module. So on the completion of this module, you will be able to acquire the required knowledge and skills to evaluate and develop capacity to effectively integrate technology into teaching and learning. So first part is very important that this module, after the learning of this module, you will be able to know about the different types of technologies. And also it will help to develop your skills. What kind of skills like how you can integrate your technologies, how you can use your technologies in the classroom, uh, how you can effectively use the technology for the diverse learners because we have different kind of learners in our classroom. So definitely this technology, uh, this module will help you to know to integrate your technology in the light of different learning style and diverse background of your learners. Then apply inquiry-based curricula and instruction and to provide planning support of access to an appropriate training for using technology. So uh, it also helps you to use the technology in an effective manner so that you can implement it, you can deliver it, monitor and access such curricula and instruction. So we need digital resources, we need digital means, modes to uh, you know, transact our curriculum, to provide the instructions to the students. So also it would help you to know about the different types of technologies which you can use. 
Also, you can apply the use of up-to-date technology tools and resources to support teaching, learning, and assessment. So, uh, first of all, uh, whenever we talk about our education system or in the classroom or the training center, we have uh, three major things which we need to take into consideration is our pedagogy, right? The way of teaching, uh, the the instructions to the students. Then the curriculum, very important, which is the syllabus, content matter, as well as the other activities which are included in the curriculum. Then assessment. So we have curriculum, pedagogy, and assessment. So these are very important three key components of any teaching learning you know, uh, process or the situations. So this module will help you to you know, apply your up-to-date technology tools and resources into your real life situation so that you can give a good justification to your pedagogy curriculum and the assessments. Moving ahead, because uh, I'll be touching up some of the important concept. So there might be uh, like, there might not be a proper, you know, linkage between the concept because I'm focusing on the key concept which are related to this particular module. Because we have two major things in, in this module. One is, managing digital education second is leading digital education so both are somewhat different to each other uh, when i say managing so managing digital education is most of the work uh, which is related to uh, teachers so teacher has to manage their uh, digital education whenever they are interacting with their students they need to manage the digital education along with any HOD head of the department, head of the institute or the principal, they also, they are actively involved in the managing digital education. So it's a two-way process. If uh, we as an institution or a teacher or teacher educator managing the digital education, the likewise, the other part are students and the parents, they are also the active part of digital education because it's a two-way process. Uh, Sometimes there are live classes during digital education uh, there are some MOOC courses like Massive Open Online course or a self-paced course. So in both the cases, the situation is or scenario is different. So uh, one is managing the digital education. Second is leading. Leading is basically for the heads or the principals who, uh, who are basically concerned with the implementation or execution part of all the strategies of digital education. So let's talk about, uh, first of all, the managing digital education. So basically... Uh, if I talk about managing and leading digital education uh, both, it involves overseeing and guiding the use of technology in educational setting. Definitely, it's clear that uh, when I talk about digital education, it means I'm talking about educational settings or the training set settings, which enhance learning outcomes. And it also includes various aspects like administration, pedagogy, technology integration, and strategic planning. So, Managing and leading digital education cover all these important aspects because uh, the head of the institution or the principals are more concerned with administration and strategic planning. The rest of the thing, technology integration and pedagogy is basically concerned with teachers and the teacher educator. So we can say uh, all the stakeholders need to work together. Uh, when they are managing digital education or leading digital education. It is multifaceted role that requires a combination of technical knowledge. So definitely, uh, if you are involving in such a system where managing the digital education is required, leading the digital education is required, it requires some kind of skills which involve technical knowledge. Your educational expertise, your leadership skills, and a commitment to improving the educational experience for students in the digital age. Also, effective management of digital education require a strategic approach. So it's not like it's, it should not be haphazard. It should be uh, on the basis of some strategic planning or approach that balances your infrastructure, which is available, like technological infrastructure with pedagogical objective and the need of all the stakeholders. So whenever we talk about digital education, the one thing is very important, the facilities or the infrastructure you are providing because uh, integrating the technology into the classroom settings requires a good technological infrastructure, right? Also the internet, you know, facilities. Somehow if we are not connected with our student uh, in a face-to-face -face mode, we try to connect through online mode. 
in that case whatsapp can also be a good learning to a digital tool right so we can make a good groups over the whatsapp and if 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 you think like the student have no access to laptops or the computer then you can you need to use that device uh, like tools or a software or the like any kind of social media which help them or which can cover all those students who are dependent only upon the phones mobile phones so in that case we have like uh, whatsapp which is playing a very good and significant role in the education system so i myself using different whatsapp group for my quiz student for my debate student for my subject and uh, definitely it's it's enhancing their learning experiences right now the second part is leading digital education because i am a teacher or a teacher educator i need need to manage digital education for that purpose i need to rely on different kind of skills struck uh, infrastructure and the you know support from my institutions definitely now if i say leading digital education leading digital education involve guiding educational institutions so any country progress depend upon the progress or the growth or development of the education system if the leaders are playing a good role or the role which is important to lead the digital education that definitely it will help to enhance the learning experiences of the learners so here leading digital education involve the guiding educational institution some are departments or teams in effectively leveraging technology to enhance learning outcomes and advance educational goals so definitely uh, if we are using digital media as a mode it helps or it's cover a different range of students or the learners across the globe it's provide the opportunity to everyone to enroll into the courses and complete their courses along with your professional or jobs in many countries the one regular degree and one online degree is you know allowed by the higher educational institutions or the you know leaders of the education so because it require visionary leadership strategic planning and the ability to foster innovation in the realm of digital teaching and learning so you can just like have a look that uh, if i talk about digital education here the role of principals role of hods and the leaders are very important by guiding the educational community toward the effective and responsible use of technology leaders in digital education can help prepare students for success in a rapidly evolving digital world and uh, one thing is very clear nobody can escape themselves from digital education in one way or other way we have to face it our student has to face it uh, all uh this like like managing and leading digital education comes after the digital transformation right so why we are studying this module because we are teacher or a teacher educator or a training in a training center or a resource center we are directly connecting with students uh, or the personnel in the education system but why the why there is a need of digital education because uh Uh, if i if we look around the whole globe or the world there is a massive digital transformation it's not only in education sector but but in other sector also we can see the lots of changes are there if i talk about the payment system commerce system that's all dependent upon our digital medias so nowadays we are you know uh, if we go to market that consume more time so what we are preferring we are preferring to sit at home just order the things and through different medias it 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 just reach to us it mean uh, everything is digital nowadays our business our commerce our uh, judiciary system uh, everything or many fields they are using digital medias so because in 21st century we can say the digital transformation it's the changes which is associated with digital technology application and integration into all aspect of human life and society so there is no no society or a country which is deprived of digital medias though it may be a, a india or a, a any country like canada australia china any country they all are using digital medias because without it our life is not possible 
in 21st century it is the move from the physical to digital so digital transformation because earlier we are using or depending more on currencies now we are using digital currencies right and uh, if we need food also uh, earlier we used to go to the places or the restaurant even now at sitting at home we can enjoy a good food everything is possible through digital medias and also it saves our time right uh, it because every new system has their own uh, strength and the weaknesses no doubt it has some weaknesses uh, and the challenges a uh, digital transformation is a term which is most often uh, associated in the business world we are companies are striving to keep up with changing business environment brought about by customer demand and technology for example if i want some product which is not available in my country i can just order it online and paying some taxes i can get that product same way if i want to get education from some other university some foreign university i can get that education through online mode so this says how the online media digital education playing a significant role uh, it's all because of this digital transformation however if i talk about our education sector where primary school secondary school college university and training centers these all are transforming transforming themselves digitally in meeting the demands of students so now by sitting at your home you can read any book of foreign authors you can read some some of the dissertation or thesis of some other countries it's all because of digital transformation now because you me we all are basically a digital leader right because uh, uh, you are working in a education sector or a training sector where your responsibility is re to reach to the masses to your learner to the students so it's your responsibility to manage this digital education effectively and to lead it so that's why the person who is uh, leading the digital education is called as a digital leader uh, or digital leader is a person who is willing to explore information and communication technology helping his or her organization to respond to changing requirement in the organization here it's a digital leader which is applicable in every field or aspect but we are talking about the le digital leader in our system our education system so digital leader emphasis is more on communication creativity and a willingness to explore new ways that technology and digital information can be used to successfully address the needs of the organization so it's not like you are using digital media just for the convenience or the benefit of yourself but you can be regarded as a digital leader if you are helping your organization you are helping your institution to grow right so with effective digital leadership an organization is able to create new ways of doing things in meeting the needs of the people in the organization and it also help to make the good decisions a digital leader does not need to understand how the technology works just learn how to use it to create competitive advantage so you know your purpose is no doubt you must know how to handle it right because if you will be having first hand experience with the technology you can better guide and you know show way to your team leaders so basically the digital leader must know or must learn how to use it to create competitive advantage which help the other persons or the other you know your institution or the organization but it's advisable because we are doing egd course we need to do the research so we must also be proficient in handling the uh, technology uh, if i talk about today's digital leader and skill required uh, the following are some of the skill that are required for to today's digital leader first of all digital literacy you must have digital uh, literacy know about the different tools and techniques uh, related to your particular fields adaptability because uh, we need to adapt ourselves according to the changing scenario if we are stagnant then we cannot make growth or we cannot help our organization so adaptability is very important along with sci this the digital leader must know must be aware about the cyber security so uh, if we are using lots of tools lots of relying upon lots of website sometime it threatens our privacy uh, we can also you know a victim of some cyber attack 
so cyber security awareness is required where we used to change our password from time to time we can use the incognito mode uh, during the you know uh, search so also the strategic thinking and identifying the opportunities and threats in the digital landscape then data literacy is very important how you need to retrieve the data or uh, transmit the data generate the data tech savviness obviously if you are attending this class today you uh, definitely you are tech savvy you must have a good communication skill because if we are in a online mode we are using digital mode though it's live or in a form of self learning material we must have a good communication skill innovation because innovation leads to creativity right so we can use innovative techniques in our classrooms collaboration we must need to collaborate with the others uh, to you know make our digital education more effective customer centricity here uh, our customer is basically the students or the learners our center is to cater to the needs and interest of our students change management so we uh, we should be ready we have the skills to manage the changing requirements of the society or the current scenario analytical thinking we should be analytical logical and reasoning global awareness definitely global awareness mean to know about the changes around the world right emotional intelligence that's very important so whenever we are handling managing the digital medias or the education we need to be emotionally intelligent right for that purpose we need to you know read some good books and try to adopt that strategy which help us to maintain our emotions sometime overuse of these digital medias lead to some kind of stress and worries uh and sometime the threat of you know hacking or the cyber attack can lead to emotional disturbances among the learners and the teachers so we must have the skill to manage our emotions effectively right so till now if you have any question then i can take up or i'll be moving ahead so i i just want if you have any question till now otherwise i will be taking up all the question at the end uh, if if you will be having any question okay anyone any question or should i move ahead forward anyone can confirm it you want me to continue or you want to ask something i think we can continue and i oh. will have the answer at the end thank you okay. Oh, okay thank you so much now because uh, till now we have discussed about what what is managing the digital education what is leading digital education who are digital leaders which is very important now because everything is happening around e learning framework uh, if we are using on a you know digital medias or we are talking about digital education it's only because of we are talking about or we are relying on e learning until or unless there is no e learning what we will do with the digital education so let's talk about e learning frameworks the you know the emergence of web technologies and tools have seen a resurgence in the adoption of e learning in education and training and moreover you can see that during the covid period also we are more relying on the e learning tools or the technologies because the e learning or mobile learning it help us a lot during the covid period but now it's like you can say it's it's like a paradigm shift that most of the institution most of the countries they are thinking about the e learning they are thinking about digital education so this module is very important uh, with respect to the current scenario because uh, in many country many good institutions or university they are shifting to blended mode where they are using physical mode as well as uh, the e learning mode so beside web technologies the vast amount of resources available on the web for which much is free has prompted several educational institution to aggregate and repackage them for use as learning material in various disciplines and area of studies now you can see that there is no subject there is no area where e learning is not there where the content material which is electronical available is not there everything you can google it everything you can get it from the google the word has been written in many different ways like e learning it's like e dash learning e learning capital e learning or e learning so it's like uh, we are using in a different ways or in different countries they are using it in a different ways 
Beside that, other terms have been used interchangeably with e-learning that include online learning, online education, sometimes digital education, technology-based learning, training, web-based learning, training, computer-based learning. So computer-based basically, which is restricted to CD-ROMs or the fixed kind of, you know, uh, devices we are using. We are, uh, we are not directly using the internet. You, we are using the, you know, the CDs. But the... Uh, that, that this is a, there is a shift earlier we are dependent on the cd roms and dvds but now everything is available on a youtube as well as well as the on the website of different organizations national and international organizations so many type of material you can get it from the CC, uh, like oer commons also open educational resources commons now e learning pedagogical framework it has basically three key components one is technology design, third, second is content design, third is learning and interaction design. So uh, whenever we are talking about e-learning, definitely it has again a three major component. It must have one curriculum, pedagogy and the assessment. So uh, taking into consideration all these, you know, frameworks for the component, the further e-learning pedagogical framework has three design. Technology design specifically, which refer to the technological tools that is adopted that will facilitate meaningful learning. So if we are doing or we are involving in e-learning, electronic learning, definitely we need to rely on some technological tools. So example of these tools are like LMS. You have like Brittany University having their own LMS. Uh, Google Classroom is also one LMS. Canvas is also, Moodle is also. So these are some of the LMSs available social media tools, online testing tools, and so forth. Uh, so together with Moodle uh, are a wide range of tools to support meaningful learning, such as tool to manage resources, document lessons, tool to support communication like forum, chat, blog, wikis, tool to enable group work like wiki, database. Uh, you have Google like uh, Jamboards for collaborative work also. Tool to support assessment like quizzes, assessments, turn it in integration grade books, tool to manage administration like we have groups, calendar, uses, report, grade book and questionnaire. So uh, it's basically talk about technological design or technology factor which is important in e-learning. Content design, if we, we are not having a particular content, then we, we, we will not be able to communicate with our students. So it refers to the content that teacher or instruction sele uh, instructor select organizes and pre present in realizing the nine desired learning outcome. So we have different learning outcomes like uh, remembering, understanding, apply, and uh, analyze, evaluate, create, reflect, solve, authentic problem, collaborate. So if I talk about the learning outcomes, it's basically the outcome which is related to uh, a particular concept or a particular content or a module. So after the completion of that content or a module or a unit, you will be able to. So in every module, in every content, these nine desired learning outcomes are required. Like there must be a provision of remembering something, understanding or gaining knowledge, applying analysis, synthesis, evaluation, creation, reflection, solve problem solving and collaboration. So your content of, uh, during e, e learning must be well organized uh, it must be systematic and it helps to achieve these learning outcomes so according to shellman uh, content knowledge basically refer to the amount and organization of knowledge that is in the mind of a teacher or the instruction instructor so uh, we must have the content knowledge the actual amount of subject matter that is to be learned the clearly teacher or instructor must know and understand the fact, concept, principle, theories, whatever is there in any given subject that they teach, right? So because uh, we need to deliver our content to our students. Now the interaction design, learning design, basically it's a deliberate choices about what, when, where and how to teach. It is the task of getting learner to interact with the content supported by appropriate tools and technology. So it's like the learning side. Student need to learn. It's like the teacher is giving instruction on the through the online medias, but interaction is very important. Interaction is only possible if the student is, you know, live in the classes. They are using different tools, and the students are also interested. 
टीचर स्टूडेंट रिलेशनशिप तो इट मे बी समराइज एट द डिजाइन ऑफ एक्टिविटीज दैट विल स्पर लाइक लर्नर कंटेंट इंट्रैक्शन इन दिस केस a learner is just viewing the content through self learning material module which is there on a website or on a particular lms second is learner learner interaction we are encourager encourages learner to interact or collaborate third one is very important learner teacher interaction which we are doing today it's a learner and teacher interaction and we are using e learning medias the framework predicts that the interface between technology content and learning design will result in enhanced learning and better learning outcomes so if i talk about e learning framework which are listed as below nine allows learning outcome again that could be remembering intentional understanding analysis applying evaluating critical thinking creating it could be construction creative thinking collaborative cooperative authentic real world situation or activity based so it's uh, which you know format you are using it depends upon you so even we have a bloom taxonomy they have given three types of uh, instructional objectives uh, for a teacher like uh, cognitive domain affective do domain and uh, cognitive domain so this is just e content principles like uh, we have technology design where we can use a virtual learning platforms content design where we are using e contents and for content we need to you know follow e content principles the content should be short content should be interesting innovative it should move from easy to complex right then learning design it means we need to design or arrange some learning activities and these all lead to learning outcomes it's a e learning framework these are the components so this is also one of the important uh, diagram it's a tpac framework uh, basically the important things here is technology pedagogical knowledge technological content knowledge and pedagogical content knowledge so it's basically tpac technological pedagogical content knowledge technological content knowledge mean it's related to the content knowledge right the content which we are delivering through the medium of technology technological pedagogical knowledge pedagogical basically mean the different ways or medias or approaches you are using to teach your students uh it it basically include pedagogical knowledge as well as technological knowledge technological content knowledge it's it's involve content knowledge as well as technological knowledge also the pedagogical content knowledge so you can just have a look three major things are there technological content knowledge technological pedagogical knowledge pedagogical content knowledge right so this is a, just a you know combination of uh, two or more aspect for a one particular term moving ahead uh, because when we talk about digital education online media in that case being a teacher teacher educator or a principal or hods of the department we must have the skill to you know develop self instructional module or a material that is called as sim because it play a significant role if the student is in blended mode he is coming for classes for 50% classes and 50% online then definitely you will arrange some live classes as well as you will be providing some kind of learning material so that's self instructional module is basically the content material uh, which student can access at any time as per their pacing so it play a significant role in teaching learning right? and it's it's for all levels and these are the materials specifically designed to enable learner to study partly or wholly by themselves right it's also called as tutorial in print and self instructional material uh, nowadays we are also using like self instructional material or a self instruction module or we can just say the learning modules or we can just say the content module so it has a variety of names Uh, it basically have been associated with many other names like home study computer based training packages learning flexible learning independent learning individualized learning program instruction and so forth uh, now let's talk about the role and benefit of e learning if we are involving in a e learning using the self learning module using the e uh, like live classes then definitely the one of the major benefit it's providing is self paced 
so most of the courses or e-learning courses are self-instructional mode and self-paced student can do the course as per their capacity or the energy or the time consistency so e-learning provide a consistent message and eliminate problem which is associated with different instructor because they are providing different material so student can go to the material they can refer to the lecture notes they can refer to the videos an instructor teaching different things on the same subject which can be critical for some discipline so for a one topic we have a different instructor intra instructors easy to update content so you can update your content because in a printing form once you have published your book it's tough to update it you need to you know again uh, publish it or print it but if i talk about e learning or modules you can easily update your content from time to time revisions can be made also there is a provisions of good content which is competency and perf uh, performance based curricula so with most learning material made available to learner instructor can then concentrate on high level of activities so you can start from like the easy to complex so you can add up more and more content student can you know grasp the content as per their learning style and their learning capabilities right so you need to arrange the content in such a manner that it it's beneficial for all the student though they are gifted or a slow learner it also help to increase your understanding student understanding because they can go for look for different resources increase participation definitely uh, the student can discuss if there are online discussion forum they can discuss to each other they can record a discussion that allow for later references right so student can go through the content after they can participate in the group activities or discussions uh, they can uh, view the videos uh, after like it's in a flipping mode hey we can use the flip mode for that uh, encourages independent learning definitely because student is uh, going through the e content by themselves it encourages their independent learning this is just a tiered implementation there are some obstacles obstacles and solutions related to it so this is related to time because tier is basically the full form of tiers is time because your e learning or technology integration involve a time right uh, it involve expertise access resources and support so these are some of the factors which are required but these all these factor lead to some challenges and we need to find some solution being a digital leaders right so what are these factors timings it it requires a lot of timing to plan your lessons to arrange for your content matter expertise expertise with respect to the content communication and technology handling access like uh, if there is power cut or internet facilities are not there then there would not be access or provision to the student that could be a challenge for that purpose we use the recorded sessions so that if, if the student would be able uh, to uh, view the session afterward resources it require a resources definitely a laptop or a mobile phones then support so without technical or administrative uh, support it's not possible to implement e learning frameworks now if i talk about role of teachers as well as principal here my focus is role of principals and heads as a digital leaders because principals they are required to train themselves to master digital technology skills so before training their teachers or the students or the personal it's important that principal must they are required to train themselves to master digital technological skills teachers also encourage to master ict and digital technology so this is also the role of principal to encourage their teachers to use ict and digital technologies competency so as not to experience difficulty in implant, implementing these changes a uh, principal wanting to implement digital leadership need to wisely use their space and opportunities to bring great changes to the school culture and thus have a positive impact on the education system it it's just one uh, like uh, research study uh, this is the finding like principal uh, in that study the, the finding were the principal wanting to implement digital leadership and but they need to wisely use their space and opportunity so it's important that the principal need to use the infrastructure used to uh, uh, implement uh, the grasp the opportunities 
so that they can bring a uh, changes in their school culture a principal need to identify the best approach to ensure the effective involvement of both teacher and students so it's again the responsibility of principal being a digital leader so according to uh, tanin mali and raman the responsibility of teachers have become more complex as they need to be committed to discovering various alternative to support the integration of digital technology in teaching and learning so the the role of teacher is multifaceted that's change uh, it's like they are handling the classes as well as they have need to handle the digital classrooms also a school leader need to explore and master new knowledge and skill as will be of aware of the latest technology as technology leader in school principal must first master and be competent with technology not only that the principal also need to master the knowledge and skill of other digital technologies like interactive whiteboard document cameras chromebook cloud computing etc in the international scene literature shows that evolution that take place in digital leadership not only in the leadership of the school but also in the other sector so digital leadership is not only for the education sector that's also equally applicable to banking economy commerce and political setups right so moving ahead according to shininger there are still school leaders who are reluctant and misunderstand the use of digital technologies so we need, we should not be reluctant because we need to face it such as the role of social media and advantage of using digital devices some principal do not master ict and digital technology competencies they because before implementing it they must master it according to another uh, authors there is a correlation between the knowledge of technology integration and principal ability to motivate themselves to implement whole school changes so if we are well equipped with the technology we, we can motivate others also uh, when they argue that the principal is the leader who must initiate and sustain the integrated use of technology in education so because some of you are principal or hods of your institutions that's why we are focusing on it uh, karan they have discovered that the need for school administrator to adapt to technological development is crucial because technological development will is uh, is going to happen in a near future also a uh, digital leadership is basically characterized by transformational leadership styles now we are talking about digital leadership so digital leaders and what they are doing they are doing uh, they are actively involving in digital leadership so it's like a style it's a transformational leadership style we can say digital leadership is basically a transformational leadership style earlier the leadership styles are either autocratic or democratic or a laissez faire now it's a digital leadership so this style of transformational leadership never changes it only adapts to the context it's it means the leaders just need to adapt to the uh, real life situation or the current scenario it can be used in all field but is particularly important in field that are adapting to quickly changing technology right in our uh, educational so digital teaching is the teaching that integrate technology digital technology in student learning so we have digital leadership we have digital teaching so digital leadership is transformational leadership styles uh, and digital teaching where the role of teacher is also changing so teacher quality factors are important for an effective teaching system in order to improve student achievement right so uh, one of the indicator of teacher quality is the master of digital competencies so how di this digital leadership is also linked with digital teaching so because if the leader is proficient he can motivate and help the teachers uh, several studies mention barriers to the integration of digital technology so we know that whenever we are in a process of implementing the digital technologies or we are trying to integrate the digital technologies there are lots of knowledge uh, like factors or the challenges one such factor is lack of knowledge skill or a training right another because teacher do not explore course material so teacher uh, like they are not maximally utilize the courses or material which are available online and also the less computer literacy level uh is one of the factor or a challenge the report by the organization of economic cooperation and development also outlined issues uh, which is preventing the implementation of teaching and learning in digital environments such as limited access to and uses of computers so students are using mobile devices for purpose 
uh, that are not educational level of student inclination for the use of digital devices. So sometimes student just relying on the mobile devices and uh, in that case, we are not able to use all the tools of digital medias. So if I talk about digital uh, leadership, it has two major things, the communication and the school climate. Like uh, digital leadership in the teacher, teacher educator or the principal or the HOD, they must uh, know like how to online uh, file sharing, virtual meetings, they can conduct the virtual discussion, information sharing and virtual communication. School climate, like virtual promotion of school goals, virtual promotion of development and professionalism, virtual teaching and learning, digital learning space, virtual monitoring of student performance. This is just a hypothetical model. Now, uh, these are some of the technologies in the digital classroom. I have used the chat GPT for that because I want to try it and I tried it for this title, technologies in the digital classroom. So I think you must have used the LMS. So I extensively using Google Classroom as well as Canvas along with our Brittany University portal. So very first, you know, and the very uh, important and useful uh, technology in the digital classroom is learning management system. It could be a Moodle, Blackboard, Canvas, Google Classroom. Then we have online collaboration tools like video conferencing, Zoom, Microsoft Team, Google Meets, collaborative document editing like Google Docs, Right, where we can uh, use, uh, we can do collaborative work like documents, presentation, and spreadsheets. E-learning platforms like where uh, they provide the different kind of online courses that is in a self-paced mode or a MOOC like Khan Academy, Coursera, edX, and Udemy. Digital content creation tools. We need authoring software. We need video editing software. We need podcasting tools. Online assessment and quiz. So we have Quizlet, Kahoot, or Quizzes. Augmented reality and virtual reality. So there are AR apps like Orasma and HPDV. If you are able to use it, we have VR headset, VR devices, and we are also a uh, second life. So I'm using in my Google uh, like commerce classroom, the second life. Interactive board. It's like the interactive whiteboard technology or a smart boards, uh, adaptive learning systems. Uh, these system basically uses the artificial intelligence. Now we are also using the, or like uh, facing the robot teacher. So in our country, in, in one state, they are uh, successfully utilizing the services of robot teacher and the teacher outlook or the personality is just, uh, that depicts the culture of that country also. Very extensively using nowadays is open educational resources because these are cost effective, these are free uh, and the uh, uh, copyrighted, uh, like they are, uh, most of the open educational resources are under CC license. We have mobile learning apps like Duolingo for language learning, Khan Academy for math, and many more. Online simulation and virtual lab, like I have told you that second life, I'm using the second life. It's a virtual uh, life for my commerce student. We have Google labs and uh, different virtual labs available for science students. Cloud computing, like we are using Google Drive and Microsoft Drives to save our data, to collaborate also. Artificial intelligence and machine learning, gamification and game-based learning. So there are different games which are available, uh, which help us to, you know, uh, integrate the technology into our classrooms. Remote uh, proctoring softwares like online exams. Uh, if at the national level they are conducting the online exam, they are using this. Language translation tools, blockchain for credentials. Uh, because uh, every credential they uh, nowadays they are providing a QR codes, artificial reality for uh, remote labs. Uh, that's it. So these are some of the key concepts of your managing and digital leading change. We have uh, many more concepts under it, but I think I must cover the important parts. Now I will be taking up your questions. If you have any question, there are lots of questions because it's it's about technology. It's about digital classroom uh, where there is one side, there is a teacher, there is a student, another, we need to handle the content. We need to handle the students. We need to handle the technology. So sometimes due to various challenges like power cuts, internet facilities, Wi-Fi disconnectivity, uh, the, the 
like strain to our eyes. So there are different factors which impact your digital education, you know, uh, goals. But still, because we are in a 21st century, we need to rely on digital technologies. We cannot escape ourselves from digital technologies, right? So being a teacher, teacher educator or HODs, we must know we, we should have a good knowledge, skills and competency in handling these tools. Not all. You don't need to, you know, proficient in all tools. One LMS, one audio tool, one video tool, that's enough. It's not like you are the master of everything. So you need to be master of some few, two to three good tools. That would be enough for you. Right? Okay, thank now. Uh, yes, thank you, Kinson. Thank you, Dr. Deepika. Uh, um yeah so for those like uh, platforms like uh moodle um blackboards i've been using it um uh, a while for like the past decade or something um okay. in fact i am actually um doing artificial intelligence education and uh, i am actually um the person who is like uh, doing the e-learning, the um, development for our institute. So uh, uh, recently, I connected with a um, digital content company and our other department from the institute, like health science and uh, early childhood education. We, de we developed a couple of the VR uh, application for them to like simulate the real world situation. So okay. can I talk about those as an example? So I can talk yes. about pros and cons to try to answer the two questions that you mentioned in last class. Why not? You can, you should mention. Because our motto of this, these assignments are to relate into your real organization and your work. That, mm -hmm. that's, that only it will make your assignment more practical in approach. And you must refer your work in it. That would be more okay. appreciable and helpful for us to know our student work, what they are doing into their workplaces. I will be like, uh, ask, like although like uh, the, po uh, the, the, the these two couple projects have finished already, uh, we've been like uh, many meetings before, but I okay. think uh, in order to finish this assignment, I have to go back and revisit the, the, the professors from the other schools and to get like a kind of like an interview so I can like have the reference like, oh, yeah simulate the situations because we didn't really uh like it wasn't in a uh, formal meeting so we didn't have a minute or stuff like that so um that's why like uh in order to do this do this assignment i probably will go back and like uh, we do the the like uh, maybe prepare the questionnaires although although we already done but uh, probably i will just like rewrite rewrite yes yes so, you can just write you can write in the write-ups if you are mm -hmm. not able to use the questionnaire at that time, you can just give it in a write-up, like in a real life situation or in my experiences, my sure. real life or organization experience. So you can give a write-up for that. Okay. Right? So and you must give. Okay. So do um do you prefer I including the, the screenshots and uh, like some of those? Yes, you things? must. You must. Sure. That will make sure. it more, uh, you know, original and reliable work. Right. Sure. No problem. You can Thank you so much. Most welcome, Kinson. Nice hearing you that you are also into the content development. Hmm. That's great. Thank so you. this is uh, today. That's why we are talking about pedagogical content knowledge and content creation is very important. It's, uh, and nowadays, content creation or creator, they are in demand. Hmm. In yes. Every country, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Anybody else? Any question from your side? Kit, uh, Kit is enjoying our conversation. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, okay. Uh, listening to Kinsen's uh Kinsen's example, like can just think of like can be like expanded to, um, to do a thesis like, in the future. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you should. You should. Because yeah. he's got get some more ideas like to do um to think about the subjects of the thesis as well. Yeah. yeah, so uh, I mm -hmm. can also help you. Like if you have a LinkedIn profiles, mm -hmm. uh, a good social media profile, you can search uh, there the uh, jobs. There are the requirements of content developers. 
Mm-hmm. In every country, in India also, because in India, because right now I'm in an Indian institution also, I'm serving as a teacher educator, there is a demand of content developers. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are seeking for a good content developers. So mm-hmm. it could be a good, uh, you know, earning uh, way for uh, in a near future. Mm-hmm. Because most of the many students, they are opting for online courses. They mm-hmm. are preferring jobs along with the education. Mm-hmm. So this digital education will be uh, like uh, uh, in a near future, it will fr- flourish. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the digital education will flourish, flourish in the uh, near future. Yeah, it's quite challenging as well. Yes, it's challenging also. Yeah. Too fast. Yeah. Now, so, now, perhaps like today we're using Zoom and then the next day we don't know what we're using as well. That's why what you can do, you can try one or two, two tools with your family or with your students. What I used to do, if I, whenever I'm trying one new tool, I used to connect to, with my daughter. Yeah. If I am, I want to work uh, on MS Teams, uh, like though I, I try to connect with my child, my daughter. Uh, in that case, uh, whenever I am uh, doing using some podcast or audio recording, I am uh, doing it with my ch- child. So it will help you to gain and build your confidence. Mm-hmm. Every time you should not use directly with your student, try it at your home firstly. And you know, you, you are saying that it's challenging. Yes, where there is a challenge, there is an opportunity. Definitely. If it's a challenging, it means it's it, it has some opportunities in the future. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. So, what you can do in every month, every month you can use one tool. In 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 full year, you will be mastering one tool, uh, for twelve tools, right? So we can use one. Uh, even Zoom is also one tool. Google Classroom, Canvas. You must you know develop your courses on Canvas or a Moodle. That will help you to you know gain more confidence. So I myself developed three courses on Canvas. Or Google Classroom also, that's also fine. Okay, any other question? Anthony, Jackie, Young. Do you have any questions? Or Hello, I have no question. Hi, Anthony. Uh, hello. Uh, but just, I just want to reconfirm about the... Uh, because we have to answer both questions, one and two. Uh, uh, last time, I remember some uh, one of the students said that... Uh, uh, we have to divide it into two parts, like 2000 and 2000 mercy. But I have more idea about the first question. Can I write more? And it, will it be a fact to the, uh, uh, the, 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 the marking about if I do, for example, the 3000 verse for the first question? And then... uh, you, Anthony, you need to consider it as a one question. Oh, I see. Divide into two parts. Oh, that so means you I need... just... Yes, you need to frame your answer in such a way that you are covering both the aspects. These are the two different situations in a one question. So mm-hmm. word count will be the word count of a single question assignment. Okay. Right? Consider it as a single assignment, not two. It's just the two situations separately given. Okay, uh, thanks a lot. Okay, okay, Anthony, nice to see you. You were not in uh, assignment briefing session. Uh- uh, uh, I I am, but I remember some of the students have talked about uh, some. I may uh, I may have some misunderstanding about it. Okay, but okay, I, okay. I, now, at the at the end, I concluded at that time that considered it as two different situations in a one question. Okay, no problem. Right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jackie, Jackie or Young, do you have any questions? Yeah. No question for today. Thank you. Okay, Jackie, have a nice day, Young. Oh, I I also have no question, please. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay. Okay, then take care. Bye-bye. You can enjoy your day. Thank you so you much. And leave the meeting. Most welcome, yeah. Kinson. Okay, bye-bye. Everyone, take care. Goodbye. Bye.